Hey guys, and welcome back to Mangotology. If you're new here, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Stephen Mango, and I'm an ex-Scientologist who makes videos here on YouTube exposing Scientology. So if you'd like to stay up to date on all my videos, please make sure to go down below and hit that red subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications, and you'll get an alert whenever I release a new video exposing Scientology. And for today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys the remarkable story about missing Scientologist Barbara Cordova Oliver. Barbara went missing back in December 2013 and was checked into a mental health facility, got checked out, and then was sent to a Scientology alternative psychiatric care facility, which later got shut down because they were holding people against their will, more or less. Then her mother was on this frantic plea to find out where is Barbara. Now, all these years later, Barbara actually resurfaced on social media. I'm gonna tell you the full story about what actually happened to Barbara, about her mental breakdown, and her subsequent return into everyday society. So if you'd like to hear Barbara's story, then keep on watching. Hi again, guys. So before we begin today's video, I want to let you know that I posted a new video probably about a week or so ago about how I had Scientologists showing up outside my front door. The story is absolutely crazy. So if you want to hear what happened, I'm going to link that video down in the description box below or just find it on my channel. And I'm going to link a couple of my more recent videos that I suggest checking out in case you are new to my channel or you just haven't seen some of my recent content. So let's jump right into Barbara's story. So before before we get into how Barbara went missing and everything, I'm gonna let you guys know what I know about Barbara as well as I actually knew Barbara back at the Celebrity Center, so I'm gonna share some of the anecdotes about what I remember about Barbara. So Barbara joined Scientology when she was only 17 years old. Similar to me, I was basically maybe like four to eight weeks after turning 18 years old, I got into Scientology, so right around the same age. However, Barbara's been involved in Scientology for 40 plus years. It's a very long time, longer than I've been alive, and she went missing when she was 56 years old, if I'm not mistaken. So she joined when she was 17, and she's been in Scientology C organization. So as you guys I'm sure are familiar with, but just in case you don't know anything about Scientology, since I get a lot of new viewers lately, the C organization, you sign a billionaire contract to live and work for Scientology from sunup to sundown. You're a staff member, but more or less, you don't have any option of living in the outside everyday world. So this is all Barbara really knows. And I wanna preface that and say, before we kind of discuss kind of how she went missing and what basically happened to her, you have to realize, guys, even me, I was only in for a couple years, and let's fast forward seven years later or so since I've left Scientology, I still have the mental scars. I still deal with post-traumatic stress disorder. I'm still unwilling to take psychiatric medication. So you guys have to understand and give people like not such a hard time when you hear about people and be like, oh, why didn't they stay in the psychiatric facility? Or um, why did they go back into Scientology? For someone like Barbara, this is all they know. They only know that psychiatry is evil. They know L. Ron Hubbard technology, auditing, ethics, how to deal with the world through the lens of Scientology. So just Keep that in mind. So she was a staff member, or a Org member as they're known as, at the Celebrity Center in Hollywood. So I was a parishioner there right around the same time that Barbara was a staff member there. Barbara actually is, I guess, a little bit different than the average Sea Org member because she ran this foundation, more or less a front group, through the Celebrity Center called Artists for a Better World. So I'm going to briefly tell you guys what Artists for a Better World is, and then we're going to carry on with the story. So let me tell you about Barbara's company and what basically the importance of it was at Celebrity Center. Artists for a Better World International is dedicated to building a worldwide network of artists who share a vision of creating a better world through aesthetics and is open to artists and art enthusiasts of all nationalities, creeds, races, cultures, and religions. Artists for a Better World International has a purpose to raise the awareness of worldwide artists about using their creative powers to benefit mankind by leading the way to a better world and by supporting like-minded public benefit organizations that advocate humanitarian benevolence. 
And I also came across this About Barber page that says she's been a writer for most of her life, starting with poetry and short stories in elementary school. Then as a teen, she got into songwriting and used her guitar as a tool to bring her words to life through music. After studying the works of L. Ron Hubbard that emphasized the importance of the artist to society, she was inspired to write Mission of the Artist. The novel shows what an artist with a dream can accomplish and how vital it is for artists with positive goals to band together. And it says that this book that she wrote, the musical, was performed at Celebrity Center in Hollywood, California. And Barber also brought the message in her book to life when she formed Artists for a Better World in 1997. This is a group of artists who have united to create a better world through aesthetics. Barber has produced and performed in many of the group's events over the years. She always welcomes artists who share their aims to join the group. Well, as you guys could imagine, Barbara worked pretty closely with a lot of different artists who were either at Celebrity Center, actors, musicians, writers, kind of more primarily, I would say. And they'd have like these award ceremonies and different things, but it was also a way to kind of recruit new people into Scientology because not everyone, at least especially years ago, would know if there is a writing contest or a open mic night. Not many people knew years ago, like the dangers of Scientology. You would come to LA and you would maybe be reading a trade newspaper or something being like, hey, like I want to enter this contest or I want to go and screen my short film or go to the ceremony or whatever it would be right so depending on like what kind of um, artist that you were you would kind of hear about artists for a better world and if you're like me you would say hey they have like the right purpose that I want to be an artist or someone of importance where I could do something better with my talents than being associated to you know how it is in LA there's a lot of ways that you can kind of skirt your attention away into whether it's drugs or alcohol or partying or just like a bad crowd here are different artists who may be kind of having a similar purpose that I do. So you get invited to this big castle in Hollywood and they have an award ceremony and stuff. So you guys could see how this sort of foundation could make people think even years ago, more or less more so than now, you can just Google about it, but you would say, oh, like this is great. Maybe I wanna check out a little bit more about Scientology or what kind of courses are offered here. That's how a lot of people got roped in. Now, I knew Barbara I'm not going to say like I knew her very, very well because that wouldn't be telling the truth to you guys. So I'm not going to pretend she was like my motherly figure sort of thing. But I did know her briefly when I was there. I remember one very specific time when I was sitting at the Rose Garden Cafe. I was having lunch, which is their like little cafe at Celebrity Center, having lunch outside one day. And Barbara came up to me and I was still kind of new. So I'm telling you guys, it's probably around 2009, maybe 2010-ish somewhere in that time and you know she's very nice I just remember kind of her like kind of soft quiet spoken she's like hey you know like there's a Sea Org member and we're trying to get them on post I didn't really know what all that meant meaning that before you can get into the Sea Org you have to pay off all your debts and you have to maybe like help sponsor them with like a religious visa or like airfare to get them to Hollywood. A lot of CR members are coming from different cities or different places, which that's another video in and of itself. But she was asking for something like $850, I believe it was, to get this person to be able to arrive and to start on staff and how exciting because they'd be able to join the Sea Org very easily if they could pay off their debt or whatever sort of thing it was to get this person to be able to arrive at Celebrity Center. I didn't obviously have the money to donate towards that. I'm like, it's kind of weird. Like, why am I donating money to pay off someone else's bills when you guys are asking me for money left and right and I'm going into debt so I could be a Scientologist. So it was bizarre. I think if I did donate anything, maybe it was like $20 or something like very small. But I just remember Barbara was just one of those type of people like just inviting to different events and different things they were having there. So I always had a positive memory about Barbara, even, she wasn't very pushy with trying to get me to donate money and stuff like that for the different causes, but um, I just remember her just being very nice. So when I heard this news through Tony Ortega's blog a couple of years ago, it kind of hit home in a way, even though like I didn't know her, like I said very well, it was just like, oh, this isn't just like a case like Shelly Miscavige, which obviously is horrible, but, and I could obviously sympathize and empathize with someone like Shelly and want to fight for her, but this is someone I actually knew. So there were different campaigns at the time. There was a free barber campaign I knew through this woman named Colleen and another like cult, um, oh, her name slips my mind, but she's this woman from the UK who actually came to Hollywood right around the time my channel was coming out. So I had my documentary coming out. I invited them and we talked about Barbara and stuff like that. And a lot of people were asking me because when I was making my video in around 2014, it's right when Barbara was going missing. So a lot of people were calling me like, hey, like, do you have any information on what happened to Barbara? When did you last see her? Because I was like the newest escapee. People wanted to know 
when the last time I saw Barbara. So in December, this is right around the time that she went missing, so let me tell you what happened to Barbara. So in December 2013, Barbara tried to make a move to Clearwater. She actually tried to move to Clearwater twice, and both times they ultimately failed. Now you guys know Clearwater is like the mecca of Scientology. It's where their flag church is, which is known as the flag land base, which is like the spiritual mecca. If you're a Catholic, you might want to be with the Pope in the Vatican, right? So it's the same sort of thing. I could see if you're a Sea Org member, you may aspire to go to a Scientology I don't want to say run city, but it's a place where there's a lot of Scientology influence. Besides LA, Clearwater is the biggest hub of Scientologists. So you want to be, if you're a Scientologist, you want to be there where there's three other people in your whole town. You want to be there with thousands of other people who have the similar goals and purposes and where you could kind of make a living more or less, which not in her case, but if you're a public member like me, I could work for a Scientology employer. You guys know what I'm trying to say. So she tried to move to Clearwater twice back in 2013. Didn't end up working out. And Barbara's husband's mother lived in Clearwater, so I think that's why they were trying to move there initially because the husband's mother was there and I'm assuming Barbara would be in the Sea organization. Maybe she took a break from the Sea Org at this point. I'm not sure, but there was two times they tried to move there and it didn't work out. I also know too that something happens at Flag. I don't know what it is, guys. I've heard so many horror stories where people go to Flag and they never want to return. Something goes on where they traumatize these people. I don't know because I didn't go on services at Flag when I was a Scientologist, but I was about to, but met my husband Jeff and I was six weeks away from going there, eventually gonna join the SEAL organization, and you guys might have never even heard about me because I'm assuming I would have still been in Scientology all these years later, I wouldn't have had a way out, I'm just guessing. I wouldn't have seen Leah Remini's show, I would have just been in a little Scientology bubble. But met my husband and things worked out. Something happens there. I know so many people would think, would be like, oh yay, like we're gonna be able to go and be on course and be in this like palace, so they have all these different Scientology orgs there, so you think it'd be good, but I know so many people that'd be like, I'm never going to flag again, can't discuss why, but never want to touch foot there again. They escape from there and something really bad happens. So Barbara came back to LA and she suffered a nervous breakdown. And she has a mother who was named Arlene. She was about 80 years old at the time. And she was obviously very worried about Barbara and her mental health condition. Now Arlene wasn't a Scientologist. So of course, when you hear about what happened, you're gonna understand the result of this. So Barbara was sent to Silmar, California to all of you UCLA Medical Center. You guys know Scientology is very anti-psychiatry, like I was saying at the beginning of this video. They don't believe in any sort of psychiatric care, mental health, anything of that nature. Even me to this day, like it, it took a long time for me to even see a therapist, never mind to where I would even be comfortable to receive that type of care. So I can only imagine how Barbara felt. After 40 years, guys, in Scientology, this isn't, oh, she was in for a couple weeks or she wasn't on board. She was a Sea Org member. She believed this to her core. If you're in for that long, you believe in the aims and the goals and the missions of Scientology. So she was sent there more or less against her will because of having this mental health crisis. Scientology even believes that we're all trying to be drugged from these psycho uh, psychotropic medications. So all these big media companies are funded and ran by these people in the pharmaceutical industries, right? So you might be watching TV and you see an ad for a psychiatric drug and it's designed to like press on your buttons. This is what they think. Like, are you sad? Do you have a foggy feeling over you all the time? Or you have aches and pains? Take, insert psych drug here. So they implant these messages into you to feel like you need to take these medical drugs. Ask your doctor, right? But essentially, any sort of human condition, Scientology believes that psychiatrists are trying to drug you and say, oh, sadness, take Latuda. So if you feel sad, you think, oh, I need to take these drugs. And once you're drugged, they implant messages into you, like under these hypnotic commands, more or less. So the pharmaceutical companies and these drug companies become more powerful because now you're dependent on these medications and they're able to take control of our society because they're gonna be the chosen few with all the money that we're funneling into them through our human condition. And it's a whole entire thing, guys, but they just believe that there are these evil people who are trying to numb us down 
dumb us down. So we're just like these drugged up zombies so we can't unleash our full potential. Only Scientology has the tools to be able to help us to raise to new heights of spirituality so we can be able to go free. So what happened was Barbara was in this facility. She didn't believe that she belonged in there and she was probably trying to get out. When you're in Scientology, you sign an agreement, me, anyone who's in, that if you ever get any sort of psychiatric care, if you're institutionalized, if you're in the hospital or under any sort of mental health care, you authorize in writing for Scientology to be able to withdraw you and take you out. You sign a form. I wish I had a, to show you guys. It might be online. I'll put it in here if I find it. So I did actually find this contract online. You could pause if you'd like to read the whole entire document. It starts at letter B that says that Scientology is unalterably opposed as a matter of religion belief to the practice of psychiatry and espouses as a religious belief that the study of the mind and the healing of mentally caused ills should not be alienated from religion or condoned in non-religious fields. I am in full agreement with this religious belief. I do not believe in or subscribe to psychiatric labels for individuals. It is my strongly held religious belief that all mental problems are spiritual in nature and that there is no such thing as a mentally incompetent person. Only those suffering from spiritual ups or one kind or another dramatized by an individual. I reject all psychiatric labels and intend for this contract to clearly memorialize my desires to be helped exclusively through religious spiritual means and not through any kind or form of psychiatric treatment, specifically including involuntary commitment based on so-called lack of competence. Under no circumstances at any time do I wish to be denied my right to care from members of my religion to the exclusion of psychiatric care or psychiatric directed care regardless of what any psychiatrist medical person designated member of the state or family member may assert supposedly on my behalf if circumstances should ever arrive in which government medical or psychiatric officials or personnel or family members or friends attempt to compel or coerce or commit me for psychiatric evaluation treatment or hospitalization i fully desire and expect that the church or scientologist will intercede on my behalf to oppose such efforts and or extricate me from that predicament so my spiritual needs may be addressed in accordance with the tenets of the scientology religion and if you'd also, like I said, would want to read the full entire document, just pause. It also discusses the introspection rundown to be held against your will inside Scientology. So it's a very crazy document to say the least. She signed one of those things. Barbara's husband showed up and a Scientology attorney. They had a court hearing and everything after like 10 days or something like that. Barbara was checked out. Her mother, Arlene, again, was concerned because she didn't hear from Barbara and things were just kind of bizarre and she knew that from when she heard from Barbara like hey like you know she wasn't really doing well so Arlene was obviously concerned and called the hospital room called the room and someone answered and said hey she was checked out she's no longer here so that made Arlene obviously very concerned so in January 2014 Arlene was like I said very worried and didn't really know what was going on and she contacted the local news because she was trying to reach Barbara she contacted the celebrity center and when that happened Happened when the news also was trying to get a statement or try to figure out what happened. Again, remember, it's a big no-no in Scientology to ever go to the media. If your loved one, family members, anyone tries to reach out to the media, boom, you hear from that person right away. Think about Phil and Millie Jones. They did that big campaign. My loved one in Scientology, call me. Which to me, their kids were adults and it's different, I think, if it was like a minor. But again, I could understand, you know, you're trying to like wake up your loved one maybe or however it was being perceived at the time. But and we're not talking about that. We're talking about with Barbara all of a sudden like three days later the, uh, Arlene the mother gets a call from Barbara and she was like where are you like what's going on but she wasn't at the celebrity center and the only thing through all this like hush hush conversation she just hears that Barbara said I'm in Tennessee that's all she knew then people online were like there has to be something more to this people are researching and were worried that Barbara might have been at a facility that is a Scientology run by a Scientologist which has since been shut down I'll tell you why in a moment um, called Life Center for a New Tomorrow here are two different photos that I found of Life Center for a New Tomorrow you can see here that one is located in this log cabin and here is a photo of their road which is clearly blocked off and restricting access from the general public Life Center for a New Tomorrow was run by the Scientologist named Mark 
and it was billed as this like alternative psychiatric care place where they're not doing any psychiatric mental health care, but they're basically doing Scientology type of techniques or more holistic where they try to get you out of your environment and they bring you to nature in a cabin and they like de-stimulate you without having like the rest of the world around you type of thing. Almost like being in a cult where they just kind of take you out of your environment and you are in the wilderness, in nature, like whatever was kind of being promised that she doesn't need to be in the psychiatric care, even though that that's probably where she would have probably gotten the help that she really did need at that time for having this type of mental breakdown. So it was shut down this facility. Let me show you guys the news stories. Basically, well, I'll explain like my feelings about this, but let me show you guys what happened. In this news article, it says, a rehab center in the hills of rural Cannon County had been shut down after a 911 call led its investigators to a locked facility. Inside, they found Scientologist literature, but more important, investigators said that the staff wasn't qualified to care for its patients. The facility was called Life Center for a New Tomorrow. Deputies said they arrived to investigate a 911 hang-up there back in February. Inside, deputies said they found someone who he said was being mistreated, falsely imprisoned, and treated through Scientology. It goes on to say that three people were eventually arrested. Dennis Flamond and Hans Little were charged with false imprisonment, and another man, Mark Valeris, who was the owner, was charged with facilitation of kidnapping. All of them pleaded either guilty or a plea that's similar to no contest. The three agreed to shut down the facility they were running. This was not the first time that Life Center for New Tomorrow has faced scrutiny. In 2014, the state cited the facility for not having records of background checks or annual training for employees on file and having residents at the facility that they weren't licensed for, among other violations. So this is the thing, not just with Scientology-run centers like this or regular mental health care. When you're inpatient, the one thing is, is there's a lot of, and I'm not saying every place is like this, but there's a lot of places where you're perceived, and I hate to say it as like crazy when you're in one of these type of places. I've been to rehab for like a week or two for a mental health thing years ago after I left Scientology. So I know how this is, it, how this is. It's always believed that the staff is the one to say, hey, this person's crazy. If you call up and say, they're beating me, they're abusing me or any sort of bad thing. Oh, they're just mentally ill. They're just making this up because they want to go back out or they're a drug addict. Of course, they're going to tell you all these horrible things. They want to go back on the street and do drugs or heroin. And this is how it is. And I know Paris Hilton did a documentary about how she was sent away to one of these like schools, like when she was like 16 or something and then physically abused, drugged, all these different things. And again, she was seen as a problem teenager and it was again the school could make her look like she was this rebellious child when really no one was gonna believe her that she was being abused there because they believe that the people there have your best interests at heart so you're right I just think it's really crazy and telling that a Scientologist was holding people against their will and other people besides just Barbara in this type of facility and they were never to be heard from again, more or less, um, a lot of these different people for like months and someone was locked, I believe, in Arkansas in a basement from this facility. So lots of craziness. And again, I think these sickos prey on this knowing that they have these mentally ill people that they can control and deceive and most people won't believe the patient, they're gonna believe the center. So the last time that Arlene heard from Barbara was January 5th, 2014. So then a few years go by and Again, journalists, people such as Tony Ortega are wondering like, what happened to Barbara? Like, do we have any update? And reached out to Arlene. And when they called to say, hey, in 2016 in the summer, like, hey, do we have any update on like how Barbara is? Like, there's no story on what actually happened. It was said that Arlene passed away. She was in her like mid to late 80s. So sad to say, but good news, I guess, is that she did have some type of uh, reuniting type of thing with Barbara before she actually passed. So I guess better late than never. So let's catch you guys up to speed on Barbara actually resurfacing in the everyday world of America. <laughs> so she, again, from what I was kind of hearing some whispers and stuff were that she was maybe like her husband was still in Scientology or they weren't in the Sea Org, but they were still leaving in Scientology. But then I heard some other conflicting things, like maybe she was back in the Sea Org, but once you have like this type of a mental health break, Scientology doesn't want the liability of it. I think what a lot of people were just worried about, which I forgot to mention when I was saying that she was being held at this life center for a new tomorrow sort of place, was her mother and a lot of other people such as myself were worried that this was another 
Lisa McPherson case. Lisa McPherson, as pictured here, also suffered a nervous breakdown and was running down a road naked in Clearwater begging for help after only recently have gone clear in Scientology, which is a very high spiritual state, so they claim. And Lisa was rescued and was taken by the Scientologist back to the Flagland base in Clearwater and was under lockdown in Scientology for several weeks where she was deprived of medical care and obviously didn't receive any psychiatric care because this special introspection rundown was supposed to handle her type 3, which is considered a psychotic break in Scientology. She was found basically unconscious with being severely dehydrated and she didn't receive proper care. She had thousands or at least hundreds worth of cockroach bites all over her body. And instead of taking her to the nearby Morden Plant Hospital in Clearwater, they drove an additional hour and a half to a Scientologist doctor instead of taking her to an average everyday competent <laughs> medical trained doctor, which on the drive there, she was pronounced dead. So others fear that Barbara may have been suffering the same fate as Lisa McPherson by being subjected to this dangerous introspection rundown. People are afraid that this introspection rundown was being run on Barbara where, you know, they could lock you in a room to de-stimulate you, like I said, and they'll just maybe bring you in a little bit of food, whatever, and you're basically like locked in a cell in Scientology until you kind of calm down from having like a mental nervous breakdown and until you kind of like chill out, then they kind of let you out of this like special spiritual service, which isn't, it's just like, an, again, a way for them to kind of like imprison you. So luckily it doesn't seem like that was happening and there was conflicting reports whether she was in or not. So I believe it was June of this year, 2020, this post came up of Barbara handing out Way to Happiness booklets, which is an L. Ron Hubbard book in Santa Monica, California. So let's take a look. This is just so mind-blowing to me after all she went through with Scientology and being sent to this mental health facility after having a mental breakdown, which was holding her against her will, and she was obviously having a nervous breakdown even before that when she was at Clearwater twice, didn't work out with Scientology, maybe something crazy went down at Flag, and she left Liberty Center, so I'm sure she saw something that was bad or she was traumatized, something happened to her. I'm just convinced, I hate to say, but something had to have happened in Scientology, and again, she suffered this nervous breakdown, but to go and then promote Scientology and hand out these booklets, I mean, I know and I understand myself having been in a cult, what this is like to be under undue influence, but it just kind of like breaks my heart that she ended up going back and she's either in the Sea Org or she's doing work through Scientology or trying to make amends. Not really sure, but she was handing out these booklets in Santa Monica with other individuals. Then in October 2020, which is this month, in the last like two, three weeks, I discovered Barbara's Facebook and I want to show you like some of her posts and her thing. Again, guys, do not write to her. I don't make these videos to like, you know, bother people. If she wants to be a Scientologist, guys let her be a Scientologist it's not our job to go and harass someone who didn't call for public attention to themselves in this way you know what I mean so just don't go and like reach out to her or anything like that I don't think it's gonna be you know, beneficial for the thing it's just to share the story with you guys but I'll show you a little bit about her in a video I saw of her doing some work through artists for a better world and it's kind of alarming and I'll explain why after you see and then we're going to discuss so let's go take a look so as you can see here, we are on Barbara's Facebook. It says she's a founder of Artists for a Better World and creator of Mission of the Artist Project, book and music. It describes her as being self-employed and living in Los Angeles with over 1,397 friends. I'm not going to show you every single post, but this was posted three days ago, so right before Halloween in 2020. It says, make artists great again. And believe it or not, Barbara is a Trump supporter, so go figure another cult leader that she's following, but I digress. So it says, make artists great again. It's time to bring back the music venues, theater, art fairs, theme parks, and all others that have given us vitamin C, culture, we so badly need. Seven months is too damn long. So it shows a photo of Barbara, and there's an L. Ron Hubbard quote that she placed here. I'm not going to read it since I don't want to subject you guys to Hubbard brainwashing, but it is a quote from Hubbard that she placed about artists. This other post, again, not going to read it all, but I am going to play you the video that it's attached to from October 12th that says Artists for a Better World took part in National Night Out in Tuesday, October 6, 2020. It was an annual event to support of the police entitled America's Night Out Against Crime. So this was in Tahunga, California, and joined with people and groups in the community honor police for their good work. So what I'm about to play you is a very short video. It's not really synced up the audio to Barbara's voice, but it shows 
shows Barbara speaking, and I just wanted to play that to you since it just kind of struck me as odd. So let's go take a listen. Great. Hello, this is Barbara Cordova, the president of Artists for a Better World, and we are here today at National Night Out to honor the police. I don't know about you guys, and I'm just going to preface this by saying that I'm not trying to make fun of her in any way, or I don't want this to be taken the wrong way, but something seems off about her in that video clip. And I hate to say it, it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just like she, like her manner of speech or the way she's talking, or I don't want to say it's like she suffered a stroke or something like that, but it's just like something's just off about how she's speaking. It's almost... I just don't know how to describe it to you guys. I'm just trying to see if you guys also see what I see in that video. Something's just bizarre to me in a way that I just feel that maybe she's not all there, if that makes any sense. And I'm afraid that she has people in her life, whether maybe it's the husband, maybe it's Scientology, or someone who's misguiding her where she needs a higher level of care or she does need professional mental health services. If she is delivering Scientology booklets and she's promoting the artist for a better world, which is obviously a Scientology front group, I'm afraid that if she did have some sort of mental health condition or something is going on, Scientology can pull her right back out again and then she could end up in a facility like that place. Again, it's shut down, but Scientology obviously has other providers and people who could do basically the same type of thing which she was already subjected to probably being at that shady facility in Tennessee so I just really do worry about Barbara I don't know if you guys see what I see in that but I'm just concerned that it's not like she's just in the normal world it's not like she's me and she left Scientology and she has normal services to go to. She might have a doctor or someone in the outside world, but I'm afraid that Scientology now has their hooks back into Barbara. I'm happy she's okay though. That's the point of this is that maybe there's hope that someone like Shelly Miscavige will resurface. That's my hope and what I pray for at night is that someone like Shelly will be free, that there is hope that some of these Scientology staff members who go missing for years at a time do kind of resurface. There's another woman by the name of Barbara Ruiz who was missing. I made a video about her. She's still gone. Shelly's still gone. There's still other people who I'll give you guys updates on who are still missing. But seeing that Barbara, she's at least alive, right? So there's still hope that maybe one day she'll escape or wake up or I don't know after 40 years if that's actually possible. But she knows, she lives in the outside world that, you know, there's probably hope that, you know, if she'd left Barbara, I'm out here, you can always give me a call, I can hook you up with some resources if you needed them, but if she's ever coming across this video, but you know, I, I care for people, even though I don't, I wouldn't get it in return from those same people, but I still have a heart of knowing like, oh, I just hope that even though I didn't know her very well, I still hope for the best for someone like Barbara. So that's what I wanted to tell you guys about Barbara's story. So let me know your thoughts and everything down in the comment box down below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on your bell notification so you get an alert when I release new videos. I have a lot more coming your way, guys. And also let me know if there's any topics or anything regarding Scientology that you want me to address here on my channel. Or if you have any questions, I want to do a question and answer video about Scientology, leave them down below. Make sure to follow me on social media at Stephen Mango. And I love hearing from you guys. And yeah, I think that's everything for today's video. And I love each and every single one of you. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.